baby, and we are back, everybody. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I'm your host, Matt Wayman. Here with me, back for a, for a nice little part two, a uh, founding member of the agency all around, comedy renaissance man, uh, Mr. Corey Rhodes, everybody. Corey, hey. thank you for coming back. Um, you are a quick runner. I am glad that I got you. So... Oh yeah, I didn't want to be here. No, you didn't. I had to tackle you, but you you know you were into it after that. You're like, might as well. My knee hurts. You're like, yeah, I'll just ice this leg for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two ice packs and a steak on that leg. I think I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be fantastic. We left off talking uh, in part one. I think we were right when you when you found your creative zest. When you kind of you got in the theater and you and you got in there and you're like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a performer. Mm, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I did. A couple of plays uh-huh. and, you know, doing some acting classes where we would, like, put on a showcase or something at the end of the year. Nice. Um, yeah, but then I started doing wrestling, too. Of course, because you got to uh, get so like, take, hey, take that anger out. Take it out. Get it. Take it out and take it in. Yeah, put it, yeah, of course, because I wrestled and I got hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. it's. Uh, I was bad. Well, that's where I realized I think I have, like, tendinitis in my arms. I'm just a fragile man. You are. You're a <laughs> fragile soul, a sweet soul. But seriously, like fragile, I wrestle at tournaments, boy. and it sucked because there was a couple of tournaments that I was like starting to do well at, and then my arms would be so spent that I couldn't even. <laughs> like, how does he have arthritis? He is he is 13 and a half. How is this? It's like Joe Montana would be <laughs> doing better. So, you, so that was high school, and then you eventually did. You, I guess you then you went off to the military shortly after. Yeah, you know, I. Uh, how was that choice? Well. Then? I would say uh, my reasoning behind joining was uh, part cool, uh, part uh, pretty dumb. <laughs> you know, I remember it literally started as that Popeye's harder. chicken and these recruiters That's with tattoos walked in. And I was like, fuck yeah. You know, I was like, I'll be one of those guys. I'll be all tatted up and I'll be wearing like these be able to get that working blues meal. and stuff. Just yeah. being like, hey. Um, but, in, a, in, a, in a Popeye's. But really, and you know. But that was kind of a phase that came and went because it was a couple of years before I turned 18. But then mm-hmm. a recruiter just happened to call me. And he told me all this stuff about all the countries he'd been to. He's like, you could be playing soccer in Croatia or something, you know. And I was like, what? <laughs> and, like, no uh, way. I didn't play soccer, but Croatia sounds fun. Yeah. Just to get out and see some I stuff. I didn't go. I didn't. Yeah. And I, you know, it just so happened I saw a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, circumnavigated Africa. Fantastic. So pretty cool. Saw yeah. most of those coastal countries. Uh been down to Peru, Guatemala, Ecuador, uh, Cartagena, Colombia. So some cool places. He wasn't lying. I was you no, know, he uh but it, we had to do like a lot of grunt work. We were on like this kind of not really an out well yeah, a pretty outdated ship. Actually the very last it's like McHale's Navy type situation. Mm-hmm. The last frigate uh is uh due to get uh, be decommissioned here soon Crazy. Right? there's one or maybe two left mm-hmm. i think i think it's just one um yeah and then my the ship that i was on just got decommissioned last Crazy. year but they just sent us on like kind of ambassador type missions you know uh, interacting with people painting orphanages and nice restoring like, the goodwill yeah exactly teaching like damage control stuff yeah um, you can blow it up, just like explain that it was something. That was a, a but most of the time, just being in the middle of the water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, just a lot doing of water stuff. A lot of deck landing qualifications for pilots. So it's nice being out at sea. You get on a routine, you know. And mm-hmm. that's, I was fairly creative then. Uh, it was funny because mm-hmm. there's like 200 of us on the boat. So yeah. it's almost like this PS1 atmosphere again. You know, there's not that many of us. But like, <laughs> I had this whole ordeal where I was like rat battling the cooks and the. <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen and stuff and people would battle each other and it was just but everything was just a like dumb joke to all of us kind yeah. of you know but it was fun and just like staying up late on watch and telling stories that's where uh you know my first uh five minutes that i tried out uh when i finally did do an open mic years mm-hmm. later uh was just like a story i had told a couple times that i knew was funny like on watch oh cool so just those late nights when not much is going on and you're like on so watch. So the military got you into comedy, I guess you can actually say. In a, in a way, you know, I, it's something I had kind of wanted to do, like, uh, but I was like, you know, how do you become Eddie Murphy? How do mm-hmm. you become like Dave Chappelle or a lot of Jim Gaffigan? And you just, you know, you just assume you're like, oh, well, I don't know, there's... Probably can't do it, so no. I'll do something else. Somebody's like, "Hey, there's this comedy open mic." 
He's like, hey, it's really hard, but you can certainly try. What was Nobody's your first stopping one? Him. Uh, the Bug Theater. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, and I awesome actually awesome theater up in Denver, uh, located up in the Highlands. Strangely enough, I had some. Uh, yeah, the Bug Theater is great. Alex Weimer, yeah, great, support them awesome up there. dude. Yeah, please support their shows. They put on, on some cool Twitter stuff. At For the Bug love of theater. God. <laughs> 66 bug theater 69 <laughs> um but yeah uh and it's funny because it was like a musician friend and he's like oh there's this open mic there's some comics on there there's some yeah. people do stuff and i'll tell you freak train i, I believe that's uh the yeah, first sure. it's the last monday shoot well you know 5280 the best shows around yeah it's a great show it really is you know everybody whether you're on the mic or not you pay five bucks it's free beer just hanging out there's i mean there's like a host there's like a theme song there's like wacky shenanigans and the lady who's been hosting it oh my god she's been doing like 12 years maybe more i don't know a awesome. long time it's a great show yeah um and the, you know and i saw a lot of comics uh matt monroe chrissy bukley uh local local denby he- denver some heavy hitters some Denvies. yeah you know i saw i saw them on that on that show way back but yeah it was like a musician who put me on my first open mic and it was from there well not even then then i got booked on a showcase because i had a friend who knew some guys who were running a show at the rooster cat cool um yeah so i got my second set ever was like a showcase that's pretty awesome that's a good way to get into comedy and be like this comedy thing's cool it's supposed to just hit my best for a long time being like oh this is this is bleak at the best yeah showcases Mm -hmm. are the best well that's a that's a good way to get into it though you know definitely to see the better part but also probably have to do longer sets too yeah when you start doing showcases like oh you can you did well at that mic here's well, 15 and, minutes and i'll say uh evan duggan it was Corey garrison and evan duggan around yeah. evan who i thought was definitely a dick at first but he's uh he's like one of my best friends now and we've had this conversation a bunch of times mm. uh but i remember he was like uh he's like well how much time you got and i was like five maybe ten and he was like five minutes <laughs> And I was like, cool. And it was the right thing to do. And you know what? It worked out pretty good. That stage kind of kind of grants you a certain yeah, likability. Corey and Evan had a cool atmosphere and cool friends. Um, so yeah, it worked out. That was a it was a nice little head start. That's really funny. And that, it's a cool little venue. I did that show. I did when you eventually ran it or booked yeah. the stand ups a little while later on that show. So I that's did a it. Pretty it was cool really story. fun. Yeah. Yeah, to be able to run it and, and still keep it as a cool room mm-hmm. while doing what you're doing now. So, uh, so we're getting um, up to that point. So, um, I guess we were talking earlier about like the reason that I booked you, and just to like give other people um, a way to know like how this is kind of going these days. So, just like it, to, to describe like a day of your life now, like what it's like for doing all of these different like you know comedy things, you know. Oh man, well, it certainly is a lot, and uh, we, we've gotten up to the part. You're a comedian now. You're in college again. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, I have a lot of. Uh, I've got my bonds diversified in a sense. In a, I'm in investing a good way. my mental capital in other areas, like uh, you know, I'm working some on film. You know, I always want to do sketch comedy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, my time in the Navy got, gave me a chance to do the GI Bill, and mm-hmm. you know they pay my tuition so I can uh, do all that. Then, um, oh man, I just lost track. Are we going to edit this? <laughs> no, there's no editing. There's I, no I editing. run it straight. This is out. real. That's why we can steer back. But yeah, the track. yeah. So I have my finger in a lot of pies, if you will. You know. Yeah, but the way and of just like waking up and being like, okay, I know I have to get something shot today. I know that I also have to mm-hmm. go to school for a little bit. I need to make some time for editing. Um, do you find you do this stuff at different at better like times in the day, or is it just one of these things where you just do it as it as it comes up? You know, I I've in the past I've done it as it comes up, but uh, you know, I was just talking to a friend saying like scheduling my stuff is like a new thing I'm trying to figure out, like managing my time, like just and it's surprisingly easy once you start to set aside a little yeah. time to start scheduling stuff. And I notice I'm starting to get more done. Yeah, because there's but stuff that like I think that we in in essence don't want to do anyway. Like yeah, so we don't schedule. Well, it's real easy you to should be, you know. It's real easy to push things off. Oh yeah, especially things that aren't that much fun um, doing. We're like, I need to sit down and actually do that because it'll make me better at all this other jazz. All that jazz. Talking about fusion. But yeah, you know, and I, and I would just like to, um, you know, try working different jobs i just you know it's hard for me to have a good time for very long mm-hmm. at a at a job uh you get fired and i worked quick, at but yeah well actually one time i got fired from cosmonita <laughs> came back 
was eventually promoted to director of entertainment. <laughs> so rags to riches, that if is, you will. Dude, that's a, that is a um, pretty fantastic Yelp review. I think that they should have paid you to write a long time ago. <laughs> just, just like yell myself. The saga, the saga that is Casa Bonita. Just Google review <laughs> Casa Bonita. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and you know, and I got it. And since we brought up Casa Bonita, I really do have to kind of, that's definitely has a lot to do with the, like the performance aspect and me mm-hmm. getting my chops a little bit because, you know, I counted, I did like 3,000 shows or something, you know, Just all my MC, total time. Right? Well, as the MC, as the sheriff, as the gorilla trainer, um, you did it all. So yeah, all the stuff that everybody forgets. Like yeah. anytime, <laughs> anytime I tell somebody I work at Cosby, they're like, "Are you the diver?" I'm like, "No, but I was that other guy." They're like, "Oh, was, that other guy." Was there another guy? <laughs> 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 I worked there so. for 28 years. Never saw another guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I was there. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, but I spent so much time on stage and so we you, did so much fucking off and yeah. kind of improvising a little bit within a structure. Um, I think there was a certain comfort zone that I was able to hit the ground running a little bit mm-hmm. with comedy. Like, I mean, still couldn't really write a joke to save my life, but yeah. for whatever reason... None of us can. It's tough. Those, those, those jokes that people are like, look at that little Ewok. Yeah, Let's <laughs> give him our love and affection. <laughs> now, what you guys are thinking, this guy looks like a little Ewok. Uh, they, they, they it's they like walk. a leprechaun Ewok hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> where do you see? Um, where do you see your lo- your sweet baby self? What is your uh, future looking like? Well, you're finishing up with school pretty soon. I'm finishing up with school pretty soon, and that's the whole deal. Is I need to be able to make money a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, through the agency we have opportunities you know to put on shows and stuff and you know right now we're in a phase of just kind of really building a, a base and stuff and you know putting on shows that are fun with people and we're not losing too much on yeah you know and then we have advertising which you know we'd hope to get into a little more of course um, the end game freelance editing is definitely something i'm looking at because that's something i think stuff. i can do uh you know i i think my editing my timing and stuff is one of my strong suits and absolutely editing is just something i enjoy Mm -hmm. so um which is the fun part too especially because you do it all you direct i mean you direct uh well it's like we talked about you know give myself give ourselves time to do stand up and do all those endeavors that you know don't necessarily pay right away yeah, and I think it's I th- I have more fun splitting it up too when you can do multiple things. I think mm-hmm. it makes each one of them more fun and takes the pressure off in a yeah, little bit. And ways. I think it makes it just a little more doable. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it just seems like it's like having like if I can get any work at all in a few of these fields, like that's a start. That's a good yeah. start to making a living. You know, and because it's all a taste thing, really. When we went to post it, you got a good eye when you edit video and stuff, and I think it shows pretty clearly. Right now, it's just it's just it's climbing through that mountain of material you have yeah. to get through to get to that other side. That's like, now I'm doing the stuff that I knew I could do that mm-hmm. I know is good. You know, so hey, let's do some wedding video gigs where we take them as professional photographers and just make like a really funny and make a huge joke of it, yeah. and get sued, but then start an Indiegogo and just write like a script, make into a million it, dollars. <laughs> we could bring some actors there and shoot <laughs> shoot a movie at their we wedding. Could st- we could stage a flash mob with a bunch of their fake relatives <laughs> and still get paid. We need that check up front. That's, the, that's, <laughs> right. that's the one. This is non refundable. This is you know that. That is a promise. I need to make that clear right now. I can't believe they just wouldn't after the they, they just wouldn't shut up about how the check was unrefundable. But yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's been fun for us doing sketches and uh, mm-hmm. no pressure on stuff. It's been you know uh, I think that the timelines that we're on is there, there's pressure. Uh, I think we in a good way. Yeah, you know, and now it's we're starting to loosen up and it's like okay, we've been on stage quite a bit and we know that come the night of the show we're going to put on something that people will enjoy we're going to be proud of i think is when it boils down to the end of the day just because we've done it a lot and it was really hard Mm. in the beginning now it's like no just shoot a video and put the video up and that's it yeah putting out content and like you said you got to get through a lot of content oh man if we looked at the first videos i've done that before looked at the first videos we we shot and stuff which is funny Man, too. being at Crossroads, I really like watching Brian Hawker watch our PSA about guitars. Yeah. Like he was cracking up and I was like, that's, you know, that was a... Uh, Just a, a dumb little idea we that came up with the, <laughs> that's, that plays really well and is really fun. Mm-hmm. We hadn't played that video for a minute either. 
Exactly. Which is crazy. So we got videos coming out. We're doing new stuff we're all the stuff, time. Putting the we're putting out, out zines. We're putting out a zine, which we're going to work on here in about five minutes. Um, yeah. So I, I can't think of any better way to, to outro to this. You want to give your um, internet credentials before we get on out of here? Yeah, you can uh, check out our videos and stuff uh, yeah. uh, worked on at agencysketch.com. Uh, we're also, follow us at Twitter at... Agency, Agency Sketch. Got it. Nailed it. We nailed it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Corey underscore Rhodes. You can check me out, Corey Rhodes, on Facebook. Uh, and I have an Instagram, but I never check it. So yeah, who cares? Not on LO either. I've been Matt Wayman, guys. We want to thank you so much for listening. This has been part two with Corey Rhodes. Check us out on uh, Twitter at Words with Wayman. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you all soon.